Hello everybody. In this beginner tutorial for the Unreal Engine 5, in this particular case, I'm showing a little bit my lighting process. Um, as you can see here, um, I'm going to demonstrate you how I was setting up the Nightmare Before Christmas setup, a scene here from Tim Burton. And yeah, I hope uh, I can show you a little bit the project settings, the lighting I'm using here, this kind of mist and fog environment, camera settings, uh, and the scene setup. So if you would like to see basically this entire process, then I'm starting right now. And if you like, you can of course also download this project file directly from my website. You can also find the link in the description below. And also kudos to all the artists who have been creating those wonderful stylized models. I was able to download for free also from Sketchfab and all the artists credits are also listed below in my description of course. All right, so let's get started with the first chapter. Project settings, right? That's important. So as you can see, when I basically start something, a new project, I do a few things. And the first thing I'm doing uh, is I change also the clipping. By default, the settings is at 10. And if you noticed, if you go close to a character, you have camera clipping. So I changed the near clip plane to 0 0.1. And now you can actually really go close to a character and check this all out. Also for this beginner tutorial, it's about lighting, moods, camera work, cinematography. So this is the main part about it. And <clears throat> the models, I'm super happy that I was able to get these models for free. Um, but of course, these models are like low polygon models. It's not about like that you have here high resolution models with great details. It's more about like, how can we achieve a nice uh, level setup, a design, a cinematic look, whatever you want to call it. So project settings, there wasn't much more for the plugins. Usually what I do is I use some uh, position calculator. I also by default usually activate the HDRI backdrop, even in this case, it's not needed. And I also activate the Datasmith importer. Um, as you can see, Datasmith for Cinema 4D, CAD importer, FBX, GLTF, so the basics. But as you have noticed, one of the most important uh, plugins we have to activate is Volumetrics because you can clearly see here that I'm using Volumetrics uh, in the lighting. And uh, especially for the environment fog and height fog, that's very important and for the lights in this scene. And again, on the settings, you click plugins and then you can see here Volumetrics is activated. In general, for the content, that's straightforward. I mean, this level or project file is very simple. There is nothing crazy going on here. And I usually basically create folders in which I then load the GLTF um, data or like the OBJ files, FBX files, whatever you prefer and whatever you can get and grab. And uh, this, after the plugin was activated, you can find it up here at this little icon on the queue with the plus, and then you click Datasmith, and you can also then select the file you would like to import. Um, okay, so first comes first. After you have been importing the models, um, it's basically what I do. Uh, from scratch is I create then a cube and I center everything and I start you this process right now How I basically start doing this so I save everything and start a new level because this can be done really really super quick And as you can see, it's an empty level. It's just black. There is nothing going on and then I usually start a plane and I make sure that the plane is on world position here in the details panel 
below the outliner as you can see here at uh, 0, 0, 0. I make this size 20 and I also put in here a cube. Of course you can use a cube um, or like a sphere or whatever. It's just so that you have something centered, right? <laughs> now, as you can see by default, uh, there is absolutely no lighting. And um, this is uh, the first thing what I'm usually changing is I use the sun and sky system. And also what you notice, once you drop it to the canvas, there is an auto exposure by default also on. And you see it starts like from totally overexposed until it is exposed, I would say correctly, from the light intensity here. But what I do is also I change my directional light here to 10. And then the auto exposure will work again. You need to give Lumen a little bit time until the auto exposure is kicking in. And then you see the exposure settings are being adjusted. The sun and sky system is nothing else, maybe quick going through this here, than a blueprint. The blueprint, you can understand this like as a container. So if you right mouse click on the actor, you can see here now the blueprint class, it's called sun and sky. And if you click to the viewport, you literally can see here that it contains a compass mesh, a skylight, directional light, and the sky atmosphere. But all those actors, you could also basically drag and drop, you know, uh, a single actors to your canvas. So for instance, if you would search for a directional light, then you can see there is the directional light and then you could also drag and drop it on your canvas and then you would also see here all those parameters. So that's the first thing. Uh, as you can see, very simple. You have sun sky system here and I have this tendency, I like that, to choose actually lower light intensity values so I don't need to use crazy light intensity values also with point lights, directional lights, etc. Okay, uh, the next step is the so-called post-process volume. The post-process volume is very, very important. By pressing G, you can always turn on the icons to see the actors also on your canvas. And in the post-process volume select that we click on unbound because we want to make sure that everything we are affecting is not just affected within this post-process volume in this cube. I want to affect the entire level. And the next thing I would like to affect is the exposure. And you can see here the metering mode is set to auto exposure, but I like to use manual exposure. So as soon as you change this, you see the auto exposure um, is off and you have a manual exposure, which is by default set, I think actually to zero. But if you go now to exposure compensation, that's kind of like a fake, um, you know, exposure compensation for the camera and for the viewport. I like to use as well very often. And if you crank this up, let's say to nine, maybe eight, you can basically see, ah, okay, now I'm in the right exposure value. You can overexpose it and you know, change this here. So this is, as a base setup, actually uh, fairly important. All right, what's the next? The next thing is, let's save this level first here, and I call it BR Nightmare Before Christmas Demo, okay? So now what's next? The next step I'm going to do is the height fog. I bring basically in the height fog, exponential height fog and this exponential height fog has as it says basically <laughs> the capability to mimic fog and you can also see here the fog density can be controlled here uh, but what is most important is for me is because i would like to use volumetric uh, information with the sun and the direction of light, so to speak, um, that we need to activate this. And we need to make sure that volumetric fog, so exponential height fog is selected, volumetric fog is also selected. And now you see that mm -hmm, when you do this, it's, it has already an impact to your environment, right? 
So this is very important. And the albedo map is also by default white, but you can clearly see now with the albedo color, you can now really change also the uh, color of your volumetric fog. Okay. So however you would like to tint this, this is totally up to you. You can have this brighter, you can have it darker. So that's totally up to your taste. Now, what is the next step? Uh, the next step is definitely also like to change here the fog density and I bring this, let's say to one. So it's a little bit then stronger. And in the directional light here, I also want to make sure that it's set to movable. So that is very, very important. Then let's see if we have actually uh, cast volumetric shadows is on. That's important. <clears throat> and then, yeah, I basically start lowering here, so to speak, the values and make sure that I get a darker C. Uh, one more thing in the exponential height fog uh, that is very important. You see also you have a primary fog density and you also have a secondary fog density, right? And also if you crank this up, the secondary, you can see how dense this fog actually gets uh, and how crazy you can actually play with those values, right? So you see also from the distance with the camera very clearly, the cube is barely to see anymore when you crank those numbers up. So this is also a great way to um, basically play with the exponential uh, height fog values. All right, what's the next step? The next step is when I was importing, of course, here, um, the models. I use just the GLTF import and then on the filters you select static mesh and then once you have all those static meshes what you can do or what kind of makes sense is like you can now uh, select all of your static meshes by clicking one object holding the shift button and then the last one and you could drag and drop everything to your canvas which you can see here but you know what I like to do instead because your outliner is getting filled up with a lot of actors, as you can see. What I like to do instead is basically taking all um, the objects and put them into a container. As I showed you before with the blueprint, uh, the blueprint acts like a container. And so you can also do this by yourself by basically um, you know, creating a new blueprint. I already did one, but I show you also from scratch again how you can do this. So if you click route, uh, right mouse click, blueprint class, you see here you have a blueprint class actor. And now you could call this blueprint and let's call it nightmare before Christmas. Okay, I have this already shortcut. Uh, I just call it blueprint MBC Geo. Okay. So now we open this blueprint and in the viewport, you see that it's a viewport like your Unreal Engine editor viewport, nothing different. And as you will notice, this serves basically as a container. I think this describes it the easiest way. So let me show you. When you have now all those objects here on in the content browser, right? And you can select all of them like this. Then you can drag and drop them to the default scene route. And now when you open here the blueprint, you can see that all those objects are basically within this blueprint. As you can see, that's the free model I was downloading from Sketchfab. And it's super low poly there. So there are not, no crazy details or anything in this. Um, and this is how it looks, okay? So now if you compile this and save it and you close this, then you can go to your outliner and you can basically say, you know what, instead of using all those different um, actors, you can delete that. And then you see there's nothing else left than our original plane, the cube and the few other actors we created. And now what you can do is you can now 
basically use that blueprint actor we just created instead. And by the way, there's also a good filter. So if you click on this little burger icon here, then you will find here a filter. Where is it? Blueprint class. And as you can see, it shows you all the blueprints already created. And in this case, I created BP stands for blueprint underscore MBC Geo. So nightmare before Christmas and Geo. So to double check again, that's our blueprint we created, right? So now what you can do is you drag and drop this blueprint onto your canvas, zero it out in world space as well. Zoom in and by clicking F and then you see, <laughs> okay, there's one rock in the blueprint, for instance. Do you see that? That got somewhere misplaced or whatever. So you can search and find this. This rock is over here. I just delete them, compile again. And now you see already what the blueprint is doing. The rock is gone. It's nothing else like a group container, whatever you want to call it. But in this case, for the beginner tutorial, all you need to know is see the blueprint first of all, like as a container that collects multiple geometry pieces, right? So here we go. Um, this is basically the level. Now let's save it. As you can see in the location, we have this uh, set up as well. And that's a great starting point because now it's all about lighting and really focusing on like, okay, what can we do with the lights? How do the lights react? Uh, what is actually my idea of, you know, setting up a level like this? And that's what I'm going to show you in the next chapter for this Unreal Engine beginner tutorial, so to speak, about level design, stylized art, lighting, and camera work. And I would almost say like cinematography work for the nightmare before Christmas. If you haven't seen it, Tim Burton. Yeah, that's my weakness. I love uh, Tim Burton's work, of course, and I love, of course, The Nightmare Before Christmas um, and yeah, all the other things <laughs> that have been created. But in my next chapter, I will explain basically for beginners also in the Unreal Engine how to use the Unreal Engine as a beginner for lighting and scene setup and getting quick results for some nice cinematics. See something strange Come with us and you will see This our child of Halloween This is Halloween This is Halloween Fun and scream in the dead of night This is Halloween Everybody make a scene Trick or treat Tell the neighbors come and die fight It's our child Everybody scream It's child of Halloween I am the one hiding under your bed Teeth ground sharp and eyes glowing red. I am the one hiding under your stairs. Fingers like snakes and spiders in my hair. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 Halloween.